One of the most important things about Bitcoin mm -hmm. clearly is that it is open source software. Yeah. A lot of what you're describing here, I would presume, is also open source software. Yeah. In, could, could in you... our opinion, if it's not open source, it's not Web5. Okay, so this is an this is an open source Bitcoin enabled internet. That's right, decentralized and, Bitcoin enabled internet. And for those listening, if you, if you're not aware, email is open source. The internet mm -hmm. started mm -hmm. open source. It became proprietary. Mm -hmm. Right. It doesn't matter if you use Google email or Yahoo email. the The protocol allows everyone to communicate. It's only the platforms and what's right. running on the server that's proprietary. Just the application layer that's proprietary. And, and there's a graveyard of open source projects that because of Web5, they're going to come back. Mm. They're going to become alive like Frankenstein. Hmm. We've, we've gone through the graveyard and made notes of which protocols, which technologies no one is developing, no one's using, but they, they worked on it maybe for a few years mm -hmm. and then just faded out because... They didn't have Bitcoin or Bitcoin wasn't mature enough at the time to, to be able to utilize those, those open source protocols. So this graveyard of open source protocols, they, those models just weren't economically viable without Bitcoin. the microtransactions of Bitcoin or what is it? Yeah, the, the decentralized network, okay. the, the blockchain itself, the, the microtransactions, uh, I mean all of it, people running uh, software on their phones. Bitcoin has really incentivized a lot of this open source development mm. because now there's a model, right? If you're working in open source, what you're selling is services and convenience. And so, and so now you've got Satoshi Nakamoto releasing this open source money. Everyone's contributing to it. And as they contribute to it, Bitcoin is worth more. As the network grows, I've, I've personally always looked at Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin as a sign of where the network is at. If the network grows, more people are using it, Bitcoin gets bigger. If the network shrinks, less people are using it, Bitcoin gets smaller, right? And so the incentivizations that exist within Bitcoin is, is the right foundation for a lot of these things that we were talking about, the open source graveyard, mm -hmm. for those things to flourish. Uh, certain things that I'm personally excited about is we've been looking at the Wildland protocol. Most people here have never heard of it. Go ahead and take a look. It's fantastic. Um, thank you to all the developers who have been working on that. I believe that that is necessary for Web5. It deals with decentralized file storage. Essentially, you have trusted nodes. You have people you trust that you're connected to with your Bitcoin node. You can hold files that are decentralized on their nodes so they can't read the file. Mm. But your node can resolve mm. that file. It's a fantastic protocol. It hasn't caught on. I wonder why. That reminds me what. Well, Hmm. Was it LimeWire that did something similar back in the old days of the internet that would break media files like a movie or a song into multiple pieces? Torrents. Yeah. Yeah, torrents, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that and, a similar structural model? Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, TBD, Jack Dorsey's company, mm -hmm. is using BitTorrent as one of their uh, DID resolvers. Hmm. So that's that's actually right on there. Like I said, when when I talk to people who are professionals in IT, and computing often they will say oh well you're just describing web one mm -hmm. right all these ideals and all the technology we've had this forever and i'm like yeah but we haven't had bitcoin and bitcoin mm -hmm. is what's going to to power these technologies forward it sounds like the completion of the internet in a way that's right i've heard other people talk about bitcoin that way but this is a a bit quite a bit more um Detailed, let's say. Yeah. Um, what is the, the data garden analogy as yeah. it pertains to open source software? So you wouldn't build a garden in someone else's backyard, right? That, that would be a lot of effort to build a huge garden, and then they can shut you out whenever they want. Mm -hmm. uh, they can also eat your food. 
your 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 garden could just go missing one day. You have no recourse. Mm-hmm. It's a lot like uh, when we use the cloud. We're building all of this data into a cloud that could just disappear one day. And I believe that what Web five is going to allow us to do is to build our garden in our own backyard, where, where we have full control, privacy, security, sovereignty, uh, autonomy over our data. Right? We have full ownership, and so. I would highly recommend that everybody looks into using open source software on all of their devices. The the ideal here would be a laptop, a cell phone, a Bitcoin node, and a Wi-Fi router. That is all open source. Because it's only when you're using open source software that you can verify that there is nothing in the background that is running, that is, you know, considered malware, Uh spyware, adware. (laughs) You are in full control of that garden. Uh All of your devices are a garden. And you tend to your garden. You put effort into it. Uh, You should have ownership over your garden. Hmm. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, click here to find more just like it, and here to find our most recent episode. Also, make sure to like this video to help shine light on the corruption of money. And be sure to subscribe to this channel to stay connected.